Hi guys, Steve here, and on this video I'm going to show you how to block the obelisks and all the airdrops. I never thought I'd have to make this video, but if you've seen my other one on the death of Ark, you'll know why. 70 man raiding tribes are wiping every server, so just read the comments below it to see what's coming your way soon. The devs might not care about all of you getting wiped, but I do, so I'm going to try and help you best I can. And the best way to do that is stop them transferring stuff into your server in the first place. As you saw, you couldn't place a metal foundation directly over the terminal. So instead, place a foundation either side of it. On Scorched Earth, you can align them up to the sides. But on the island terminals, it's blocked, so you're going to have to align it up diagonally. It might take a couple of goes, but you can do it in thatch first if you want. There we go. Now what you need to do is block two of the three obelisks off completely, and I'll show you how to do that later. Then build this structure, or one like it, near a high populated obelisk, with active bases around it. That way if any raiders try to destroy it, they'll be noticed, and you can alert the rest of the tribes on the server to attack them. With all the airdrops and other obelisks blocked, tribes will still need to transfer stuff in and out of the server. So that's why I'm building this transfer hut. You give the door code to all the tribes you trust, and that'll keep out all the people you don't. The console's sticking through the foundation so you can still use it. And to transfer items, click transfer arc data at the top, and drag the items you want to transfer to the central window. The upload survivor and creature data is at the bottom, as well as the download creature data. You will get some noobs transferring their main character to your server without testing if it was friendly first. In that situation, you can fly to the obelisk, open the door and let them out. But you're going to have to make the judgement call if you think there are scouts for a main raiding party. Get everyone on the server to keep an eye on this building, because raiders only have to blow a part of it away to gain access to the terminal. Ok, that's a basic transfer hut, you can build a more fortified one if you wish, but let's get on with permanently blocking the obelisks. We're going to use vaults for this, but as you just saw, if somebody deletes a foundation they can get to the console. You can't put vaults on the ground, so we'll be using thatch foundations that we'll delete after. Put one foundation to the side, make sure it's centred, you just need one, and it won't let you place another one anyway. Next place a wall to the side, then two ceilings on top of that. If you're just going to place one vault, that's all you need. But here, I'm going to place two, one inside each other. So for that, I need to make another platform as high as a vault, so I can place another one on top of that. I'll just put the ceilings on. That's the basic structure we need to hold two vaults, one on top of each other. I'll just equip the vaults. And show you the design from the ground. It's pretty simple, just a space big enough to fit a vault in. OK, the next bit's a bit fiddly. You want to try and place a vault so the beam's in its centre. Click once for its position, and glit, then click again to place it. I just get off to double check it's covering the console. It is, so that's fine. Next we need to do the vault above it. You can't really see down here, so I'm going to hover and do it from above. I like to align it up with the other one, but it doesn't really matter if you're just using two vaults. And there you go. All we need to do now is delete the thatch, and both vaults will drop down over the console. If you wanted more vaults on the spot, after they've dropped, just recreate the scaffolding again to the side, put another vault on the top, delete the thatch, and repeat the process. Now demolish a foundation that's holding everything up, and all the vaults will drop down over the console. The top one looks like it's been destroyed, but it hasn't. It's just dropped into the one below. You can see the other one's side there. It's just slightly off alignment, but pretty close. 
Now if raiders blow one vault, they'll be surprised to find another one blocking the console. Depending on what explosives to use and where they hit it. If one vault gets destroyed, the other one should be just slightly damaged. And that should give you enough time to come here and attack the raiders. Okay, that's how you do it if you just want to block the console. But I'll now show you what you need if you want to reinforce the central vaults with a wall of vaults around it. This is the same thatch scaffolding as before. I've just extended it to hold more vaults at the top. Again it will have two vaults in the centre, but this time it will have surrounding vaults around them to stop incoming explosions from the side. The thatch base foundations will need to be extended to make the top platform larger so you'll get enough room to place the 9 volts you need at the top. This scaffolding doesn't have to be pretty or match this exactly. Just build it how you want so it can support the vaults above. I'm going to skip ahead now until I finish placing the vaults. And this is what it should look like when you're finished. One vault on the bottom level with nine above. I'll quickly show you from the top. They don't have to be perfectly aligned up, just close enough to stop missiles getting through. Time to start deleting the thatch, and this is going to turn into one giant game of Vault Janga, where it might land on my head. I'll try and work out what's the best order to remove them. Yes, I'm a little nervous at this point. These foundations were just spacers, so these should be okay. But you never really know if they're holding up structure above. Ooh, almost got splattered. Now it starts to get a bit dangerous. But that one's okay, and now the entire structure is supported by just one thatch foundation. I suppose the best option now is to throw a grenade in and blow it up. Then all the vaults will drop down. But I'm kind of curious to see what would happen if I demolish it and it would drop on my head. Should I? Yeah, let's see what happens. <laughs> Well, I'm completely trapped, and it looks like the middle vault didn't drop down to the floor. There's not much I can do here, so I'll try and get myself out of it, and then come back to you. I'm free! And as you can see, the vault sticking up in the middle is the one that landed on my head. But that worked out okay as well, as the raised vault protects the one below it from explosive damage from above. So, it's up to you if you want to do that or not. It was more of a fluke that one vault got raised up, while the other one landed on the ground. You don't want both middle vaults landing on you, or there'll be a gap underneath where the console will be uncovered. You can leave the obelisk like that if you want, but I'm now going to add an early warning system. Use tripwire alarms and place them around your vaults. They have to be in line of sight of each other to have a connecting line together, and place them about a width of each vault, as if they're too far apart they won't connect. Just like that. If you make a mistake or if some don't connect properly, you can unwire then rewire them. When you finish placing the alarms all around the vaults, rename the traps to whatever obelisk you're at. Here I'm at green obelisk. That way if somebody breaks or attacks the trap, it will alert you to which obelisk we're trying to destroy. Give both of them the same name as two alarms will be triggered. Wild animals can also trigger these alarms, so you'll need to protect them with a spike wall. That also stops other players setting them off by mistake. I'll skip forward until this one's finished.
There we go, I've put two layers of spike walls around the vaults. That looks pretty imposing, and hopefully it'll be enough to deter any possible raiders. And if not, at least you'll get an early warning that they're trying to attack you. I'll show you what happens when an alarm is triggered on an official server. Again, rename the alarm to where it is. For this test I need to enable trip by ally. And if anyone triggers or destroys them, you'll get this alarm and message. It'll also remain in your tribe log. We've covered the obelisks, so now let's go over blocking the airdrops. The simplest and cheapest way is to use foundations. Wait for the airdrop to come down, then align yourself up to the flat side. When it's in position and you're close enough to the airdrop, access it and take its items. The crystal will disappear, allowing you to place a foundation. You can use stone first in the beginning, then upgrade them to metal later. There's a lot of drops, so it's going to be extremely costly. So having them blocked by stone is better than nothing. Place another foundation next to your first one. This will make the demolish timer last longer. Then place two tripwire alarms on top of those two foundations. Now use your GPS and get the coordinates of the airdrop. Rename your alarm with the GPS coordinates of where you are. That way if your alarm's triggered you'll know where to fly to. I'm just doing this coordinates as an example. Make sure they're both the same. And finally, place a spike wall on top of them so they can't be triggered accidentally. That's the safest, cheapest method I've come up with. But if you've got the resources, you can always block the airdrops off with vaults. This time we'll be using one thatch foundation to put the vault on. Again, align it up in the same method as before. Take the drops items and place a foundation. Here I'm going to put an alarm underneath a vault. So when I remove a foundation, the vault will drop down on top of it. Again, rename them to the cords of your airdrop. Now place a vault on the foundation and move it forward a bit so it's going to cover the alarm. Now that's in position, go around the back and delete the thatch foundation. That airdrop blocker is going to be a real pain for raiders to destroy. Now you can leave it like that, or like the obelisk you can put the tripwires and spikes down. Put an alarm in each corner. Then rename it to the coordinates. When you've done all that, to place one spike wall all around for each side. And there you have one extremely well defended airdrop. I hope this video helps to keep you all safe, as I don't want all my nooblets out there getting wiped. Thank you for watching, if this was helpful please like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out the other helpful videos at the end and hopefully I'll see you again. Goodbye!